Hey fellow mobs, Moby here. I'm going to start streaming every Thursday and Saturday at 3 p.m. PST. I'll be playing all manner of games, including Armored Core. I hope to see you there. Now back to the video. Welcome back to Armored Legends. In this series, we interview some of the best players in the world and have them share their strategies, builds, and tech. I have something very special for you today. I found two players who have thoroughly mastered the use of the Fasan Plasma Cannons, one of whom is a celebrity of sorts, a tank player who is well known for using a unique shuffling technique to move faster than most of his opponents. My in-game name is Takafumi Arasawa. I am a mathematician and a programmer. I program battlefield management software, strategic optimization AI. I have been playing Armored Core for 23 years. I started with Armored Core 2. I've been playing an evolution of the exact same design. The only time I've ever equipped anything with legs is during the initiation missions before I unlocked unlock tank legs, and once I unlock the first set of tank legs, it's just that for the rest of the game. But then AC6 came out, and man, that was surreal. The number of people that were just going crazy over this game. It's like, oh my god, it's an armored core that has mouse and keyboard input, and people actually play it. I've been waiting for this since I was literally nine years old. So I've actually haven't just been playing tank that entire time, I've been playing the same tank that entire time. Every build that I have in every Armored Core game is an evolution of the same concept that I've been using since I was able to conceive of a coherent build concept. And it's been the same play style on the same build that whole time. It's so easy for me to get into the air because everybody just thinks tanks are supposed to play on the ground and this is why everyone goes crazy over the movement stuff that I do because everyone just plays slow tank on the ground. It just never leaves the ground and it's like, I mean, all right, if you want to have a 2.6 second QB reload and never leave the ground, I'm just going to splash you with Fazan from 800 meters until you die. I don't like ratting, but I can rat heavy tanks. People call it shuffling. I didn't name it. And it's something that I basically brought over from playing a lot of Unreal Tournament and Quake and stuff. The mouse movement is very, very similar to bunny hopping, how you can get extra speed if you travel along curved paths. Because I can do that with AB, it's just very, very easy for me to outrun other tanks. So most people, they speed up AB by ABing diagonally. That works, that does speed you up because you get the thrust from your main boosters and your side boosters, but you can do that better. So while you're putting in a, a left strafe, you you also turn your camera to the right and that rotates your AC and while you're rotating you're traveling along a curved path and basically just 3D game engines don't handle angular momentum and acceleration well just because of the math of how those things are implemented in 3D game engines so you can use it to cheese extra speed out of nowhere that's the basics of how shuffling works you can shuffle on anything it doesn't even have to be a tank the benefits that you get from shuffling are dependent on your QB jet duration longer QB jet, you get more extra speed. Burzel gets almost nothing from it. I've never really had a name for it, but I guess the best word that you could apply to it is aggro tank, because most people play tank very, very defensively, and I don't like doing that. I don't like sitting and waiting. There's a reason that I chose the name Takafumi Arasawa, because the way his, just his lines in that game uh, just spoke to me. His line at the end of that mission is one of my favorite. If, if we, we can, can just hit, hit the target, the target we, won't we won't lose. lose. It's, it's common, common sense. sense. The reason I like that line so much is it captures the what I'm going for when I build I play tank aerially, and people are always weirded out by that, and I'm just like, man, you must have not played 4th gen, because tanks in 4th gen were in the air all the time. You play like that in order to force your opponent to drain energy coming up to your level, so by the time they get to your elevation, they've got very little energy left for dodging, and that mitigates the mobility difference. It's really nice with Fazan and manual aim in 6th gen, because I can get outside of lock range, which is about 450 meters and I can just manual aim snipe people with it. So my main is that tank that I showed you earlier on Visa Treads. He's called Solar Wind, and that has been my main forever. I have a hover tank called Lethal Dose, just because the hover tank's AB thrust is so insane. Boat now is the fastest thing in the game. That's why I've been playing Lethal Dose a lot more than Solar Wind. 
Why is the playstyle so potent? Because almost nobody plays it, so nobody knows how to deal with it. No one knows how to deal with a tank they can't run from. I guess it's also super potent just because it overcomes tank's biggest disadvantage to a large degree, which is obviously just its max speed. Because Fazan is so versatile, there are two modes I can play in. I can play Big Burst, or I can play Sustained. Fazan Uncharged is very good for Sustained, especially combined with Majestic's 4 second reload. The 2 second reload of Fazan Uncharged. I can pace the firing pattern so that there's just no downtime. And the reason that that build is called Solar Wind is because when you are in control and you have the AP advantage, I'll get in the air and I'll just say, at me. They have to waste energy coming at me, and as they come at me, they have to push through a more and more dense field of damage output, which is why I call it Solar Wind, because they gotta push against this increasingly intense wind of radiation that strips away all of their mobility and armor as they get closer and closer. It's just beep spam. The shot warning is just constantly getting just beep, 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 beep. It's very hard to IG that. Like, when do you put your shield up? There's just no break. So it comes covers both defensive and offensive play with very high damaging, high uptime weapons. That one, everything that I was just explaining about using Fazan Uncharged, it doesn't apply to that one because the Boat Lakes have very bad stability. My eye perspective is a little off because for me 2300 is bad stability and it means that I can't sustain CQC. Like I can't stay in someone's face and spam Majestic and Uncharged Fazan because I'll get staggered. So Lethal Dose's passive ground movement boost speed is 250, which is bad. It's really bad. The boat legs are just, a, they're the size of the Taj Mahal. You just, nothing is going to miss you. If you are passive ground boosting with the boat, you will just take every shot and you'll get staggered super quick and that stops your reign of damage hell. So I can only use Fazan's charged shot with lethal dose just because I can't get in those sustained close engagements. And the pattern with lethal dose is basically, depending on what I'm fighting, it's zoom in. While I'm zooming in, I've obviously got 30% impact reduction. So I can take some shots while I'm zooming in. So I'll hit with a double Fazan, then I'll hit with one Majestic and that'll get the stagger and then I'll use Use the remaining majestic for a stagger punish and then while they're staggered i'll just pull a 180 turn around and just zoom out until my fazan's cool down and then just repeat but versus anything lighter what i'll do is i'll zoom in start with the majestics get the stagger and then use the double charged fazans as stagger punish for a, like a bbo build like what ramen does that's literally 80 percent of their ap bar just gone uh, and that's why i call it lethal dose because it's just designed to stagger and then deliver a lethal dose of plasma straight to the face. I am using lethal dose more right now, but I still like Solar Wind more. I still consider Solar Wind my main. Solar Wind just has some really bad matchups, like double coral missile lamb kites. Something that a lot of people don't know is that AB is faster vertically. During vertical AB shuffling, you're faster because your main boosters are active, your side boosters are active, and your vertical boosters are active. Lamb kites, if you can get under them, the more under them you can get, the better you can catch them because they can't run vertically. So you just A, B straight up to them and they don't expect it. Suddenly you are right in their face. But that's the only way Solar Wind can ever be a lamb. Lethal Dose can catch lambs much, much more easily. There have, in general, been very few missile weapons in AC that appeal to me. I really like direct fire cannon weapons. If we could just hit the target, we won't lose. It's as simple as that. Shoot gun, man, die. Because cannon weapons, they've just got the best DPS. But the problem is that people dodge them, and they tend to have lower muzzle velocity and or lower reload time. So you've got to have good timing and aim and a good read on your opponent's movement to hit the shot. And if you miss, you get punished quite soon severely because of the slow cycle rate. And that's especially true. AC6 is weird just because core theory or whatever. The engagement ranges are so limited. So the only thing that really reaches out in AC6 is missiles. But it's sort of a cruel joke to me because all of the missiles that feel good to use to me are bad. And all of the missiles that are good feel awful to me. Like VPM. 
Never, never. They're obviously not as good now, but they just feel like wheat trash to me. It's gotta be big, it's gotta be flashy, it's gotta do a lot of damage, and BPM is not any of those things. I basically just committed to running a tank with four cannons on it, and it doesn't matter what the meta does to it. I'm gonna run it. There's a lot of people that are like complaining about the rock, paper, scissors thing, and I get that. But my take on that is, well, all you have to do is be so amazingly good at the game that you beat your bad matchups. It's that simple. And all you have to do to do that is hit your shots. I'll say first of all, all you people out there using LCBs, LCB is very powerful. Fazan is better. It doesn't matter what you're piloting. It's got a better cycle rate on its charge shot. It's, oh, its charge shot is a rail gun. It enables you to project threat outside of lock range, which in Armored Core 6 is a huge deal. They fill two niches at the same time. And that's true of a lot of the charge weapons in Armored Core. A lot of the charge weapons are two completely different weapons. Uncharged shot is just a melee weapon. I think their muzzle velocity is something like 280, which is bad. And they don't have any proximity detonation. So they're just a melee weapon, but they are a very strong melee weapon. I don't like lasers because they don't do enough impact. So LCB Uncharged actually has quite a good impact, but it's accumulated impact is garbage. And Fazan Uncharged has really good impact and really good accumulated impact. Fazan has the advantage that it's a AoE, so you can splash people with it, you don't have to direct them with it. The way Plasma works in 6 is really cool, because it's damage over time. Fazan's Uncharged shot, its DOT period is much shorter than the charged shot. The opponent has much less time to get out of the EMP field. And on interesting maps that have cover, like Xylem, if you're fighting on the ground and you are sort of kiting your opponent, you can, you just shoot Fazan at the ground as you're kiting backwards and your opponent walks into the AoE as they chase you around cover. So it's got really good area denial ability. So the charged shot, on the other hand, is literally the fastest projectile in the game. It's got a projectile speed of 980 meters per second. Fazan is a dual purpose. It's a melee weapon and a rail gun, which is really fucking cool. So the reason that I swapped to Walt FCS, the buffs that Walt and the Archibus FCSs got to their mid to long range spec in 1.06 is a big, big deal for playstyles like mine. Since I don't use missiles, I'm entirely reliant on direct fire front loaded damage. And that in AC6, because of the way tracking works, hurts my prospects versus kites and stuff a whole lot. But with the huge buffs that mid range and long-range FCS has got, I can much more reliably hit shots with weapons that have high projectile velocity and or proximity detonation uh, very reliably out to like 220 meters. Even versus players like Disco that move very, very fast, as long as I time my shots right, it just makes my attack windows so much longer. I don't have to close to like 130 meters anymore to hit shots, and it's great. It's a huge buff to anything that likes to use high velocity cannon weapons and Fazan having 980 meters per second is the sniper cannon or rail gun whatever you want to call it of AC6 can really be said to have such a thing. So the switch from Ephemera Head and Arms to C3 Arms and Mind Beta Head on Lethal Dose is in part because I needed to get energy requirements down to equip Walt since it's such a demanding FCS. And C3 plus Majestic plus Walt FCS gives you absolute asinine bullshit shots at mid-range, which is really nice if you're not on the receiving end of it, which I'm not. And Mind Beta Head has low energy use and garbage scan. Its scan is so terrible, but I can put up with that for Walt FCS. It's also got really good stability. It gets Lethal Dose to 2101 stability, which now with Meza's stability nerf, I think it lost 130 in 1.06.1. So Solar Wind is only at about 23, 2300 something stability. So now Lethal Dose is only 200 stability less than Solar Wind, which is pretty interesting considering it's so much faster. But yeah, that's why I made those frame switches. It's just an accuracy, stability, and energy requirement thing. Like, it hurts my energy defense, but it improves my kinetic defense a little, which is nice for the Zim matchup, which is by far Lethal Dose's worst matchup at the moment. The energy defense taking a hit isn't really that big of a deal, because 
there aren't LCB tanks around all over the place anymore, thank God. On Lethal Dose, the core is main dish. There's no other core that I would use on the boat legs because their stability is so bad and main dish has the best stability of any core and laser kites do nothing. I, they lasers ricochet off of Lethal Dose like no one's business and it deals with drones extremely well. Ephemera Arms and HAL Core, that's a part niche that I always spec into. Those two parts, they've got the weight of a midweight, but they've got the defenses of the light side of heavyweight. And that niche is exactly what my builds go into. Throughout the entire time I've been playing Armored Core, I use NGI and nothing else. I've never used Santai because it requires me to come to the, down to the ground around too much. I spec for energy capacity by using NGI and QB reload by using Ephemera Arms and Halcor. So the switch to Veril Head on Solar Wind is exactly the same reason I swapped to Javelin Alpha instead of Majestics. It's very obvious that after the Meza nerfs of 1.06, FromSoft is really pushing Meza treads to be incapable of moving fast, which is very disappointing, but I figure, okay, well, if that's what they want for those treads, then I'll go heavier. So I swapped to Javelin Zooks and Veril. It was the swap to Veril was really a swap back because it was what I originally used. Uh, it's just got really, really great stats. It's got great defense, it's got a uh, really good scan, and it's got good stability as well. Uh, particularly if they play on the ground a lot, it's very easy to splash them. I really like at the beginning of a match, I will go super aggro, super fast to get a aerial shot in on someone as quickly as possible so I get the AP lead and then they're forced to chase me. That's the best possible position that I can be in. The way that I dodge is exactly the way that I dodge hit scan in FPS games. So for anyone out there that lives under a rock and doesn't know what hit scan is, it's how a lot of games used to handle bullet firing weapons because game engines couldn't handle accurately tracking the position of something that moves as fast as a bullet. When you fire a gun, it would just project a line straight out from the end of the gun's barrel. And anything that that line intersects, it counts as hitting. So you obviously can't dodge that reactively. So you would move in a way that just made it hard to hit you. So the way that I dodge, and I know before I get a tag, I'm a tank and it doesn't matter as much to me when, you know, I don't get instantly vaporized when I get hit by a lag laser. But my lightweight friends out there, I'm trying to help. Don't reactively dodge. Don't even try to preactively dodge individual shots. Pretend that what you're dodging is hit scan. Once it comes out of the barrel, it has no travel time. That you gotta be continuously moving in a way, moving in a way that just makes it hard for the barrel to be pointed at you at any given time. And I know that's easier said than done, but it's definitely doable and I do it in a fucking tank. A word of advice for anyone listening, lands usually take, a, depending on how much you're forcing them to QB, they usually take about 40 seconds to run out of energy. So watch the clock and be ready to punish when they start to drop. Yep, uh, Arasawa Heavy Industries colors. That's uh, what Takafumi's AC was. Because it was just a color preset under the corporate tab in AC or answer. It's like those industrial sodium lights uh, that you'll see at like mining quarries and stuff, or some schools will have them because they're just, they take forever to burn out and they, they don't consume a lot of energy. So you just leave them on 24 seven. Oh, street lights as well. On Lethal Dose, I've got purple lights. I love that it looks like a giant alien centipede thing. My uh, Steam name is also Ask Santa for some skill quitter. It's just like, come on, man. It's AC6 ranked. Like, get a life. What are you? Oh, man, I'm top of S rank at AC6 because I disconnected on everyone that's better at the game than me. Like, wow. You put that on your dating profile? I bet women find that really attractive. Yeah, so it's just that decal is in a place where you could just see it during the intro in 1v1s. That way anyone that wants to quit on me gets to acknowledge as they quit that they are in fact worse than a loser.